Welcome to Shovelware Diggers. Our dig team's currently excavating the Soft Key Shareware 2000 Hit Games 2CD Collection. You can find a link in the video description containing the entire directory structure of this archive. Here's what our diggers have for week 116. For more information on how to join the dig team, simply follow the Patreon link in the video description. Now without further ado, let's get started. First up, Brendan of Retro Swim has dug up DOS games backslash arcade2 backslash juggle121. Part of me thinks this would be Jill of the Jungle, but I don't know. Well, first of all, I'm not seeing the typical Jill of the Jungle files. Um, we do have file ID dot diz though. Type file ID dot diz. Three ball juggler version one two one. So absolutely not Jill of the Jungle. Fast EGA VGA juggling tutor with arcade game. So wait a minute. This is actually not. This is meant to teach people how to juggle? Well, it actually says right there, teaches fundamentals of juggling, demonstrates common mistakes, graphic and text instruction of several tricks, speed control for fast or slow motion. Registered version includes four and five ball lessons and $15 plus $3 shipping. Hmm. Okay then. All right, just J to run it. First magnitude. Oh, and there we go. Juggling Tutor Program. Copyright John Gallant from 1991-1992. So, yep, we have a speed control here. So that's interesting. You can actually get it really slow from the looks of it. But no, we'll just leave it at, at where it defaulted to. Okay, so more setup. Um, oh, you can set the ball colors, background styles, the sound toggle. And that's the point when I realized I actually had it on mute, so... I'm not hearing anything right now, so I guess the sound's only in the game. Okie dokie then. Lessons. Uh, basics. Juggling is tossing a few objects in the air in some orderly fashion. You need more objects and hands to be juggling. Three objects in two hands or two objects in one hand will do. Juggling three balls in two hands in the ba basic cascade, usually only one ball at a time is in the air. It is actually easier than it looks, but it does take some practice. Most people can learn in less than an hour, some in 15 minutes. A few give up before learning. Don't give up. Learning to juggle is similar to learning to ride a bicycle, not much more difficult. Like riding a bike, once you have learned the skill, it is yours forever. Uh, I know people who are in their later years who would argue with that point, but... So yeah, me, me personally, I'm not a person who ever learned how to juggle, so... It's kind of interesting seeing it disseminated like this. So yeah, that's pretty much looks like all this program is. It's just basically a tutor on juggling. There's also a trick section here, which looks like it goes into a whole bunch of different tricks here. Yeah, that's definitely an advanced trick. Now there is a game mode here, but I have to wonder how this even works. It's like, wouldn't this just be, just, just be like pushing the keys? Press the shift key to start the throw. The computer will always make perfect throws. You only control when throw starts. Oh wait, there's more to it. Hold down the controller alt key at the same time you press the shift key to throw back to the same hand. So let's see here, begin game. So, oh, that didn't go so well. Uh, what? <laughs> I'm kind of confused as to what's going on here. I'm even failing at juggling on a PC game somehow. Okay, I okay, okay, I get, I get it now. <laughs> yes, thank you for the press Q to continue. Okay, so the right shift key does throw balls, but for some reason it won't let you press it to start with. 
Yeah, this is actually... <laughs> you can't just... I... <laughs> this is tricky. Okay, I think I got the pattern now. So yeah, once you get it going, you're just alternating pressing both shift keys and you're good. So yeah, that's um, three ball juggler, at least according to the side name there. Um, this is a kind of a weird program, <laughs> really. Like, well, for one thing, I can't say I've ever seen a piece of computer software that actually teaches people how to juggle. But yet also contains a game portion with it. Well, it's just it's just it's interesting. Is it worth fifteen dollars? I guess if you want to learn how to juggle, it'd probably be about the same cost back then as a book to teach you. So yeah, I guess fifteen dollars is acceptable if you wanted to learn how to juggle. Next up, Zed Supremus has dug up. Uh, wait, what is going on here? Okay, let me show you guys something here. This here is the Series 1 folder in the PD-1 folder in DOS games, and we've got this very bizarre executable name here, 6WP4EES. I don't know what that means, but look at some of the other files here. There's a readme.bat, which, given the fact that there isn't any actually actual readme file here or anything, you'd think that would be something to do with... Like, maybe it would, like, run the program in a special way, but no, look at this. It's supposed to just type a readme file that doesn't exist. Well, here's the other thing. If we go back here and type out all the folders that start with series, look at them all! What the heck is going on here? Like, we could try going to... Oh, I have to put in the CD first. We could try going to, like, series 2... And it's a very similar situation. Except now the file is 6wp4efs instead of ees. Which means I'm going to guess, given where we started in the alphabet, series 20 is probably going to be ezs? No, it's ses. What is going on? Well, I don't know yet, but let's find out. So the one here... Well, even the numbers were different. So, what's go do? Okay, go just runs it. So let's see what happens. Word slide puzzles. Puzzle series number one. Copyright 91 by Ronald... That's hard to read. Ronald Blocher? Blotcher? Something like that. From Arlington, Texas. Registered version contains hundreds of different clues and cost ten dollars but then why would you pay to register when there's already 20 series for shareware unless this is actually wares like that's possible wow that was not a pleasant sound just now um before i before we do this um where's my escape key i have to start it first i guess okay before we do that let's actually go to Series 20. Let's just confirm. Oh, Series 20 is apparently Spanish slash English. Huh. So I wonder if there's like an actual directory that this program should be in here. Man, this thing makes weird noises. Called It was called Word Slide Puzzles. Look at that. There's actually a couple folders this could be. There's a WSP10 and a WSPMV2. Word search puzzle maker, no, that's not it either. Interesting. Is there a slide? There's actually a couple there. There's slider 12 and slide puzz. That's so weird. So it's like... It's like these series folders were all supposed to be part of something else. But that something else wasn't included. It's very weird. Well, we'll look at this first one here. Type escape key to begin. 
Man, that's obnoxious. Oh, we can't even hit the F. Do any of the keys work? No, you can't actually hit any of the F keys until you actually start playing. That's kind of weird. Okay, so help. The arrow keys on the num keypad. Make sure num lock's okay. Arrange the letters in the box to make a word to fit the clue given at the bottom of the box using a few, as few moves as possible. You can peek to see the answer one letter at a time by typing the F2 key. Each peek will cost you five points. So you basically slide the letters around to try and make the word to try and to basically try to make a word that fits the clue given. Okay. Pause at any time by pressing the F9 key. And then just to distract you, every 15 seconds the frame of the puzzle box will change colors and you'll hear a beep. Be turned on and off. Okay, so what is the actual hint? Draw off? I don't wait, the hint's at the top. Oh, this is like a tile puzzle. Okay, so what's actually happening right now? Anyone familiar with those like sliding puzzles? Like number sliding puzzles? Or like picture sliding puzzles? This is the exact same th concept. So we're trying to basically get whatever this is in the right order. The controls are very weird. They're backwards. So you see how the thing, you see how the empty spot is in the top, top right corner right now? You actually have to push right to get it to go left and left to get it to go right. And then up and down are also reversed. Huh. So I'm gonna guess that this is drain. There we go. So yeah, it actually was. And it's making a lot of noises. You can stop now. These controls are really messing me up. <laughs> Although now that I know what I'm doing, it's not nearly as difficult. It's just really freaking obnoxious is what it is. Okay, so I'm going to guess that, like, the other ones, like Series 2... This one says English-French. So what does that mean? Oh. So the English part is saying what the hint is. And the French part was saying what the word is. So all these different series folders, I'm guessing, are a whole bunch of different languages then. Okay, so that was word slider puzzles spanned out over the over multiple <laughs> 20 different directories. Um it's interesting. Very obnoxious with the sound effects. Not a very high asking price. The fact that there's so many di different that there's different languages involved with it is kind of interesting too. Yeah, you know, all, all things considered, it's actually not that bad, really. But I would say turn the noise off because it is very annoying. Oh, hey, look! It actually still makes noise even if you do turn it off. I take back what I said. Game sucks. Can't even get its sound settings right. And last up, Paul Shears dug up DOS games backslash adventure backslash CD at VAT. Or I guess that could be C Dad VT. I don't know. So it started raining outside, so that might pick up on the recording. If so, oh well. You have to hear a little bit of dabbling from the water. But, um. This is kind of weird. We got a whole bunch of files called Cliff, including one with dollar signs in the extension. I didn't even know that was a legal character to use. Um, it's cliff.bat and an irun. So that's interesting. So that suggests that this was probably made with some kind of um, adventure game construction utility or something. Um, let's type the cliff.bat file. 
I run cliff. <laughs> um, I prefer not to run off cliffs because that usually ends in a lot of injury. So let's see what happens. Cliff Diver, Investigator for Hire, Crime to the Ninth Power, Game Data Copyright 91 by Patrick Farley. And it's moving on its own accord, so I wasn't able to read all of that. Okay then, so I'm guessing the game's already started. So, I've been investigating a lead on a murder over in the Sunset District, and by 10.30 I was about as worn down as Millie Lemur's welcome mat. Did I pronounce that person's name right? Anyways, after running halfway around the Mission District, I figured it a nice gesture to show up at my office and catch up on some paperwork. I was just locking the files when I noticed a faded folder laying off by itself. I was so tired, I didn't even remember setting it on the desk. The label on the cover read, Ricardo Zamboni and the Zamboni Corporation. Current investigation, open. With Barbara in her holster. <laughs> okay, so we know that this private investigator's um, gun is named Barbara. Wait, you're referencing Dick Tracy? Isn't that kind of like... Isn't it kind of... Is, is there a word for when something that shouldn't be referential because it in and of itself is kind of fake, is referencing something that's kind of fake. <laughs> I don't know, I just find that weird. Okay, so we have a lot of story here. You like to read the instructions? Sure. While Cliff is out, a few notes about the Adventure Game Toolkit. Okay, so we know what this was written with now. This is written with Adventure Game Toolkit, which I believe we have seen before, and is one of those annoying things that has not just North, South, East, and West, not just Northeast, Northwest, Southeast, and Southwest, but also up and down. Scotty beamed down a tricorder at a BLT. <laughs> what? Okay, yeah, this engine does look familiar. We got the move counter and score counter. Middle of a long hallway that runs from east to west, there's what looks like an open doorway just off to the south. Okay, so go south. Uh, okay, apparently I wasn't able to go south, even though the guy just said there's what looks like an open doorway just off to the south. So why can't I go south? Okay, something must have happened that makes me want to not be on this floor, so maybe I'll just head east. Now it says there's an open doorway to the north. Let me guess, if I try to go north... Well, let's me go in that one. Okay, so why couldn't I go in the doorway to the south, but I can go in the doorway to the north after going east a bit? That doesn't make any sense. Okay, so for crying out loud, a genuine 9-to-5 office. You know, over half a ton of reports, invoices, and memos flow through one of the, these drywall padded cells in just one workday. With all that paper flying across his desk, the squirrel who lives here probably couldn't even tell you what he was singing, signing his name to, the poor guy. Look, there's your proof. There's a business memo on the floor. Get memo. Reach over and pick up the memo. Read memo. Oh, it actually, you know, puts it in the little frame there. So all data files must be backed up and are secured by the close of today's business. You'll be held responsible for any damaged data or data media. Videotape of last night's news broadcast will provide further information. So I don't know how to leave this room. <laughs> um, maybe if I try to go the wrong way. Can't go north. Can't go south. Can't go west. There we go. Maybe if I go to the help at all, I think we're pretty much on our own here. Really? Well, at least shift question mark brings up this. This doesn't actually help me. Although apparently there is an exit command. Like if I actually type that in? Oh, it actually does leave into a particular area. That's kind of interesting. All the janitors, plumbers, and electricians store their supplies in here. It's a metal locker standing against the south wall. Open locker. You need to unlock it first. Unlock locker. Perhaps you should specify a tool to unlock the locker with. Well, what am I actually carrying? It's probably a good thing to know. Carrying a business memo and wearing a brown trench coat with 
a working outfit. Look in trench coat. Limited edition celebrity signature series reproduction of the very first of the very trench coat worn by Humphrey Bogart as Sam Spade in the Maltese Falcon. <laughs> this game's kind of weird. Okay, so this seems like a typical text adventure thing. It looks like it's trying to go for a sort of film noir style, except kind of not at the same time. There definitely seems to be some inspiration here from like Dick Tracy and stuff. So more of the comedic side of the film noir style. So like halfway between like that and a comic book. So I guess if that's the kind of story you want, well, here you go. One in text form.